What's up YouTube? So I have a whole bunch of food in front of me because I want to share what I think are some really important vegan staple items. So I have a lot and I don't always have these things in my house at one time, but you can't go wrong having all of these things in your house as a vegan. So if you're stocked up on good vegan food, good vegan groceries, then you're gonna minimize the chance of you going back to the grocery store, like when you're feeling hungry or something, or going out to eat. Uh, I, what I love about being vegan, and this really applies to, to anybody, not even just a vegan, is that you can throw food together. And that's one of my favorite things to do, is that over the years that I've been meal prepping, I've found that I just like, love to try new food combinations and you know experiment with different combinations and really being vegan is simple like people will ask me once they find out that I'm vegan like how do I live my life like literally the only thing you replace is dairy with almond milk and or some other nut milk and then there's vegan cheese and I don't eat eggs like I don't need eggs so being vegan is not difficult and there are so many options as I'm about to show you and these are the things that I like to be stocked up on in case I want to throw some food together but, but you could also meal prep out of this food and make a whole week's worth of food or more. So I don't know where to start but the first thing I want to say is that I'm not going to show like vegetables or fruit because that's kind of obvious. Um, when you are vegan, hopefully you're going to be increasing the amount of vegetables and fruit that you consume. I like to keep frozen vegetables stocked as well as fresh vegetables each week and fresh fruit. I have frozen fruit as well. Uh, peas, green beans, frozen carrots, frozen berries, and then I'll buy you know fresh berries each week or oranges and apples and bananas. Uh, same with the vegetables. I like to get bell peppers for my salads. I eat a salad just about every single day. So I'll have, you know, with my tomatoes and things like that. So obviously a vegan should be eating more vegetables and fruits. I am not going to be showing fruits and vegetables in this, in this little staple item. Just assume that you should have them in your fridge and your freezer. We'll start with some frozen items. So I like to be stocked up and have a nice option of vegan meat and there's so many good brands out there these days like the options are endless like I have Dr. Prager's bean burgers I have some ground crumbles these are from uh, the Kroger brand like a grocery store brand and they're super good Boca is a good brand Morningstar make sure you check that the bag says vegan on it because some of Morningstar items are not vegan. My favorite vegan meat brand is Gardein as well as Beyond Meat. Uh, they have really good options but there's so many brands. Just look in the frozen section and you'll find something that you love but Gardein for sure is the best one. Let's stick with some frozen items. So waffles, these from Vans are a good option. A lot of them are gluten free, but like this one, for example, is not. And they add three grams of sugar, which isn't terrible. This one adds two grams of sugar. So I always look for sugar count when it comes to frozen items or processed items, just because you don't want more sugar added to the foods that we already eat. Um, so of course with this, you could have syrup with it and fresh fruit on top. There are several brands of vegan waffles, um, but Vance is a good choice. I do like to keep Ezekiel bread with me. Um, this is the sprouted grain, seven sprouted grain bread. I think some of their breads are gluten free. This one I don't think is. It is flourless though and I really like it and it, I just feel a lot healthier when I eat it. It only has one gram of sugar and all the ingredients I can pronounce and I know what they are. So I really like that. It does need to be kept frozen or refrigerated. I just keep it in the fridge and toast it when I'm ready to eat it. So yeah, I do really like this brand, um, Food for Life, but besides that, I say toast or some sort of bread is a staple item. Same with bagels. Uh, this is just a whole, whole wheat bagels. The, the brand Dave's Bread is a good brand, and obviously bagels are high carb and you know not the healthiest thing to eat, but they are a great breakfast option or snack option. So 
Now, if you are a coffee drinker, then um, you're gonna want some vegan creamers. I like quite a few, and as of right now, I have a few options in my fridge. So first of all, I have this unsweetened almond breeze, um, only 10 calories, no sugar. Obviously, it doesn't taste that great. Like, it's not gonna make your, your coffee taste like a sugary drink, but that is a great option. Then there's the Silk brand. This one I got in vanilla. This has four grams of sugar, but it tastes really, really good. This one I just recently tried, so delicious. Caramel creamer, probably one of my top favorites. Um, I do really like this one. This has three grams of added sugar, so I do try to just pour a little bit into my coffee when I am drinking it. And it only has uh, seven ingredients. My number one favorite coffee creamer is from the Natural Bliss Almond Milk Creamer in Caramel. And that one is the best one. It's a smaller bottle, a plastic bottle, and it's pretty affordable. I think like two or three bucks for the bottle. And that one tastes the best in my opinion, but this one is a close, close second. I don't know, I've heard a lot of people say that like they don't know what to replace their coffee creamer with when if they're gonna go vegan, but I think there's like many options for vegans of, of creamers because there's at least like five or six brands that create coffee creamers possibly even more and you've got to find some like they all taste really really good so peanut butter is definitely a huge staple in a vegan diet um, i like to get natural peanut butter and your nut butters should only have one or two ingredients and that should be peanuts and salt or just the nut itself. So if you get like almond butter, it should just be almonds. Um, if it has added sugar, corn syrup, things like that, you are just eating junk to be honest. So look for the ones that have only one or two ingredients and there should be an oil on top and all you have to do is just stir that in and then pop it in the fridge and, and it will stay mixed. This one I just get the grocery store brand and it's under two bucks so it does not need to be expensive. Um, tofu is a big one. I like to saute these over a little bit of oil on both sides. I like them, them to be nice and browned. I get the extra firm tofu and just chop it up into, you know, like one inch slices or so. A good source of protein and not as processed as like the vegan meats if you're trying to avoid that. Of course, of course this is made of soy, but soy does not bother me. I am not concerned about consuming soy. Yeah, tofu is always really affordable and you can make tons of meals with it. You can put it in curry, you can, you know, just have it on the side, you can put it in your salads. There's so many options. You can even make your eggs with this in the morning or whatever. So look for recipes with tofu and you'll, you'll find something. The, the key is seasoning them really well. So just buy a bunch of seasonings that you really like and it'll taste fine. Um, almond milk is of course, a necessary item and I like to get either unsweetened original almond milk or unsweetened vanilla and I like the Silk brand, I like the Almond Breeze brand, I like the grocery store brand, literally all almond milks I've tried taste fine and uh, I don't really drink almond milk plain. Some people do so if that's your thing go for it but I like to use it for cereals or um, cooking the potatoes, things like that. There's tons of options. There's also soy milk, uh, coconut milk, oat milk. So some people who have nut allergies, you know, you can find either, like for example, if you're allergic to nuts and you're looking for some sort of butter, you can get a seed butter, like some sunflower seed butter. And then if you're allergic to nuts in regards to milk, you can get um, oat milk, which is, I have yet to try it, but I know it's a lot creamier and I do want to try that as well. Oatmeal is definitely important in anybody's diet, I feel like. You can do everything with oatmeal. You can have breakfast, obviously. You can turn it into flour. You can coat things with it. You can have it as dessert. I like to get these quick oats. They're so cheap. It's like two bucks for this whole thing. And I just add some boiling water to it, put some peanut butter, cinnamon, maybe some fruit on top. That's it, oatmeal. I like to consume um, cereal because cereal is typically fortified with vitamins and minerals and if you are vegan you may find that you'll be deficient in some things like B12 or 
magnesium or vitamin D. Um, these foods, cereals, typically are fortified with vitamins and minerals. Just find the ones that have, find the cereals that have minimal sugar added. Uh, I like this brand as well as the Puffins cereal. It's like a little penguin on the front. I think it's from like Barbara or something. Um, but this is Nature's Path and this is also gluten free, but this one tastes really good. I like the crunch of it. So it's not something that I eat every single day. I'll have it as a snack and I definitely always weigh this out because, well, not always, but like if I'm eating it on a daily basis, on a daily basis, then I will weigh it out because otherwise I'll pour way too many serving sizes and you're just consuming too many carbs and sugar. So make sure you weigh out the exact amount that is recommended. Of course, pasta is one of the best options for a vegan. So, you know, if you're going out to eat, that's one of the easiest things to look for on the menu is like pasta with sauce. Uh, but I also like to keep it stocked in my house because, you know, there's days where you're feeling lazy or you don't have a meal prepared, you can just throw together some pasta. Uh, I like rigatoni, regular pasta. And then you can also find a lot of a lot of healthier options like lentil pasta. I like this brand, it's more affordable. 25 grams of protein, which is insane. And it only has two ingredients, red lentil flour, organic quinoa flour. Um, and then there's a brand Tolerant that is literally just lentils. They also have green lentil pasta, there's chickpea pasta, there's a lot of options. Um, the only thing about these is they don't tend to refrigerate well or like they don't taste as good as leftovers, so I like to prepare these the day of and eat it, you know, right away. And, you know, it's probably good for like a day or two, but if you're going to meal prep with this, it doesn't stay as fresh as regular pasta does. And then, of course, some pasta sauce. I just stick to the basics. I try to get a pasta sauce that is like no sugar added. Um, this one is an organic to tomato basil one. It does have two grams of added sugar, but you know, the ones that are really, really healthy are usually like the ones that you can find that are made locally or they're a lot more expensive, like six or seven dollars per tub. And those usually have no sugar and very minimal ingredients, but this is, you know, a good option. And again, just throw it, throw it in some pasta and you have a meal. Rice, of course, because I eat rice like literally every single day of my life. I could eat rice for every meal, that's how much I love it, and especially jasmine rice. Like, I don't put anything on it. Before, I was putting olive oil and garlic salt on like long, long grain white rice, but I recently started eating jasmine rice, and this tastes so good on its own. Um, I know some people think that brown rice is better. Um, personally, I don't enjoy the texture or taste of brown rice as much as I do white rice or jasmine rice. So I eat jasmine rice. It's not that big of a deal. I think white rice like raises your insulin levels quicker. I'm not really sure, honestly, but like if you have a health issue, maybe that's something to be concerned about and look into more. But if you're just a general healthy person, eating white rice is fine. <laughs> lentils, red lentils are my favorite and one of my favorite meals is red lentil dal, and I like to have that with rice and some fresh spinach and balsamic vinegar. I have made that on my channel before, but I can put the best recipe that I have found down below. So yeah, you can do a lot of things with red lentils and it's definitely a great source of protein. Potatoes are always a good option. And again, you could eat this for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I like to get these little petite potatoes and they're all mixed. So it's like purple potatoes, white and red potatoes. What I like to do is cut them in half or in, in fourths. And then I drizzle them with some olive oil, some garlic salt, pepper, uh, rosemary if I have it. And then I bake them in the oven until they're like browned and crispy. So good, one of my favorite foods for sure. And I don't have sweet potatoes with me, but that's another great option are sweet potatoes. I have a bunch of cans here. So beans, my favorite beans are great northern beans or even cannellini beans. They taste so good. I try to get the ones with no salt added if that is available. 
Um, but otherwise I always uh, drain these and rinse them. And then I have garbanzo beans for, or chickpeas. Those are good for a lot of things. Of course, you can make your own hummus, you can make falafels, uh, you can add it to stews, soups, whatever. Same with kidney beans. You see this one is no salt added. And I have black beans as well. Black beans are my probably my second favorite. I like to also keep diced tomatoes. I like the fire roasted kind. Um, I put this in soups or chili and uh, like a curry. This is yummy. And then coconut milk. Um, I get light coconut milk. You could just get full coconut milk and dilute it with water. But coconut milk is good for making curry, which is one of my favorite meals. Um, this isn't the healthiest thing to have, but I do like to have it because who doesn't like mac and cheese? But this is Annie's Vegan Mac, and it is hands down the best mac and cheese I have ever had. And I just, it doesn't taste like your usual mac and cheese. It tastes better. I don't know how to explain it. It's made with pumpkin and sweet potato and it's just super creamy and rich and it's so good. Like it doesn't make you feel heavy though. Like, you know when you eat really creamy, way too cheesy mac and cheese and you feel sick? That doesn't cause this. It, it just tastes perfect. And I like the ones that are shells. There's, a, there's one that has elbows, but I swear it doesn't taste the same. Even though it's like the same cheese uh, it does not taste the same so the ones with the shells are the best chia seeds are another great thing to have uh, I like to sprinkle this on like peanut butter toast or you can put it in smoothies or yogurt and um, they're a good source of fiber and omega-3s so I like the black ones I think there's a couple of other options but yeah they last a long time another good thing to have are hemp hearts and I like to put this on salads. It adds like a nice, a nice texture as well as a like nutty flavor. Um, and these are really good for you. They have a lot of protein in them, a lot of vitamins and minerals. And I think these are also a good source of fiber and omega-3s, so. Um, let's see, I like to have butter. This is soy-free butter from Earth Balance and it tastes like you know, typical spread butter in my opinion. The best cream cheese that I have found is from Go Veggie, the strawberry kind. It tastes just like, you know, regular cream cheese. I don't know if I've adapted to it, but um, it, it tastes so, 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 so good. It says this is made with coconut and yeah, it's, it's a lot healthier than regular cream cheese. Hummus is a huge staple item for vegans. And this time I did get a dessert hummus. So this is chocolate hummus and these taste really good. Like it doesn't taste like chickpeas whatsoever and they don't add sugar to this, I don't think. Yeah, there's no sugar added. They just use like cocoa powder, which is awesome. So you can dip pretzels in this or strawberries or other fruits and it's a healthy little sweet treat. Uh, I always keep apple cider vinegar. I put this on my salads along with olive oil and lemon juice. Um, I think olive oil is a staple. I don't know why I'm showing these things, but you know, that is something I use just about every single day on my salads, um, or you can drink a shot of this in the mornings. Some healthy little snacks that I like to keep on hand are dates, medjool dates, and dried apricots. I am running out on my apricots because I love them. Like once I start eating them, I can't stop. Um, dates, I like to eat either plain, like two or three of them, or I like to put them on my oats with the peanut butter and cinnamon. It's so good. You can even make like a date paste or date sauce type of thing to spread on toast or waffles. And um, something random is I always like to have tea stocked up uh, because why not? This is mint and chamomile. These I like to have at night. For a nice sweet treat, I like complete cookies. This is my favorite one, the Snickerdoodle. These are vegan, they are not healthy, really. There's a lot of protein, but they're not healthy by any means. Uh, but that is my favorite and I'll have that maybe like once a week as of now. 
And another sweet treat is dark chocolate. So I like this one from the Endangered Species, Strong Velvety Dark Chocolate, 88% cocoa, and there's only three grams of sugar. So you can eat a third of this for 180 calories, and I typically eat less. Um, but yeah, dark chocolate is really good for you. I try to get a pretty high cocoa percentage. Sorry that was like all over the place, but those are really the main things that I eat on a regular basis or, you know, monthly basis. And of course there's other foods like nuts and seeds and coconut oil, just random things. But um, as of right now, this is what I have stocked in my home. If you have any questions, please comment down below and check the description box for some vegan recipes and to check out my blog and follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.